public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in a court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network, a network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. The case you're about to see made newspaper headlines not so long ago. The story of a man who almost killed another to keep what he wanted. Stop it, Joe! Stop it! See what you're doing! Sure, I got sore. Who wouldn't have gotten sore? He was pushing me around. I had to do something. You picked up a drill, Joe, a pretty deadly weapon. Yeah, I know. I didn't know what I was doing. The report says you tried to kill him. Well, maybe for a minute. But I never touched him with that drill. I swear I didn't. We started to fight, and the first thing I knew, there was the fire. You gotta believe me, Mr. Matthews. I can understand why Harrigan wants to frame me. But I'm not guilty, I swear it. I got a witness. No, Joe, you haven't. Well, Pete Logan was standing right there. He saw the whole thing. He can prove I'm telling the truth. I'm sorry, but Logan says that he didn't know there was a fight until after the fire. Let me see what I can do, Joe. Mr. Harrigan? That's me. I'm Bart Matthews, public defender's office. This is my daughter, Mary. How do you do, Miss Harrigan? Hello. What do you want to see me about? I'm representing Joe Riley. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. I already told the cops all I know. He tried to kill me. I hope he gets what he deserves. I'd better be going, Dad. I have to get back to the office. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Miss Harrigan. Goodbye. Your charges and Joe's version of the fight seem to conflict. He's lying. He never was any good. I never should have hired him. You knew him before the job? He worked for me on a bridge job a few years ago. It was booze and women then, and it still is. Well, if he was that irresponsible, why did you hire him again? I didn't want to. I had to. Suppose you'd tell me something about it. Well, our case on work is tough. This North River job beat them all. Right from the beginning, we were hitting bone. Hitting bone is drilling hard rock. Mighty dangerous work when you're 50 feet below the bottom of the river. But there was more than the rock to contend with. There was water and cave-ins and dynamite. Let's go, boy! Yes, and there were the tempers of the men working in confined quarters. Men who spent most of their lives underground. feet by tomorrow night. Six feet through bone. I'd like to have the whole gang of them down here. They couldn't ditch six inches. Maybe if we could get some help. Where? I got all the agencies in town looking. Panty waste. They're afraid to do a man's work. They're liable to get their feet wet. Joe O'Reilly's back in town. Him? I wouldn't have him on the job. He can spud, Jim. You said so yourself. Right now, we need help bad. Not that bad. Come on, grab that drill. Push that dirt! Move! We got a tunnel to build! Come on, Red. Uh, it's on me, Joe. Well, hard-hearted Harrigan buying me a drink. The name is Joe Riley, remember? I remember. Been in town long? Oh, a couple of weeks. Colorado, putting up a couple of bridges. Broke? Why not? 
You wouldn't be offering me a job, would you, Harrigan? Could be. No. What do you mean, no? Once is enough. I like my bosses straight, not supercharged. Or have you become more human lately? I need a driller, Joe. We're pushing bone. Pays good. They pay better in South America. Hey, you think them senoritas would go for me? I uh, heard you were playing poker the other night. Uh, I didn't think you cared. I was just trying to get you off the hook. Get who off the hook? Me or you? Sure. I owe money, but I'm not worried. That North River job you got's an eight ball. You've been crying all over town for drillers. You buying me a drink ain't friendship. Okay, I'm in trouble. I'll pay you a buck an hour extra. You ain't enough trouble. Two bucks. Two and a half. Seven o'clock in the morning, Joe. There'll be overtime if you've got the guts to stick it out. Well, I guess them senoritas will just have to wait. Joe reported to the job that morning and worked overtime for the next week or so. Harrigan wouldn't admit it, but Joe made the rugged schedule possible. He was setting the pace. Today, boys. Vincent. Paige. Riley. Oh. Easy come, easy go. How about you and me making it go tonight? Lay off, Riley. I can dream, can't I? Logan. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harrigan. Thank you, Daniel. Hey, just a minute. Take it easy, Jim. Mary can take care of herself. Oh, there are a few things here I don't understand. Uh, the numbers. That represents the job number. Oh. And this? That's the contract number. And this one here? It's your social security number. Really, Mr. Riley, you did know that one, didn't you? Uh, sure. I just wanted to talk to you. You got a nice voice. Thank you. Oh, well, just a minute. I was serious. I mean, about taking you out. But I'm sorry, but I can't. Oh, I look much better in a pinstripe suit. <laughs> I'm sure you do. You must be irresistible. Just passable. There's a good show playing. We can have dinner and take it in. How about Saturday night? Hey, Riley! Well, how about it? You're being paged. Ah, don't worry about Rockhead. He's just my boss. Rockhead happens to be my father. Finish up your lunch, Riley. You're losing time. Well... It was very nice meeting you, Miss Harrigan. I'll see you Saturday night. Mary, you're not going out with him, are you? I think he takes a lot for granted. Stay away from him. He's no good. He chases anything in skirts. Stop worrying about me. I bet he does look good in a pinstripe suit. I told her about the guy that night. Everything. And I warned her again. But Riley kept bothering her. Did she go out with him? A few times. But it was nothing serious. I see. Mary's just a kid. She didn't know much about men. And I was right about Riley. Look what happened. He came after me with a drill. He tried to kill me. Tell me, Mr. Harrigan. Could his going out with Mary have anything to do with the fight? I told him to leave her alone. Did you do anything to start the fight? No! You tried to protect yourself. Mm, he might be 20 years younger than I am, but in a fair fight, I'd tear him to pieces. It's a serious charge, attempted murder. Riley should have thought of that when he came after me. If he's convicted, he can go to prison for 10 years. That's where he belongs, in jail. Mr. Harrigan, are you sure that you're telling me the truth about that fight? I tell you, he tried to kill me. You're making a mistake defending him. He's dangerous. Everybody would be better off without him. That's the way you feel. You bet that's the way I feel. You 
like a daughter to me, Mary. I hate to see you like this. I can't help it. I'm so confused. I... Everything will work out all right. I don't know what to believe anymore. I know it's my fault, but... Why did Joe have to do it? Why did it have to happen? I'd like to see Miss Harrigan. You'll have to make it some other time. Mary isn't feeling very good. It's rather important. Please, Mr. Logan, ask him to come in. I thought I answered all of your questions. I thought you did, too, but now I'm not so sure. I know it's your job to defend Joe, Mr. Matthews, but how could there possibly have been any justification for what he did? He tried to kill my father. That's not Joe's story. I don't care what he told you. He couldn't have been telling the truth. Our Joe says that you were a witness to the whole fight. I didn't know there was a fight till after. What more proof do you need? Lots more, Miss Harrigan. It's your father's word against Joe's. Despite the testimony, I find it hard to believe that Joe is guilty. Well, you can believe what you want to. You're his attorney. I have reason to believe the way I do, Miss Harrigan. Now, I've made a thorough check on Joe. I know all the jobs he's had in the last 10 years. I've talked to most of the people he worked for. They like him. There isn't one of them who wouldn't give him a job right now. Oh, sure, he was a rolling stone. He liked his fun. He had disagreements, but he was never mean or ugly. This is the first time in his life he was ever arrested. Now, Miss Harrigan, does this sound like the background of a man who would try to kill your father? My father said he did. Why? Why would he try to kill your father? I can't talk about it anymore. You know, Joe, you've been out with him. Do you feel that he's guilty? I don't know what I feel. Easy, honey. I haven't slept a wink since it happened. It was so sudden. Dad in the hospital and Joe in jail. I've been afraid to let myself think. You haven't told me everything, Miss Harrigan. Maybe you should. I've got to, Mr. Matthews. I can't keep this inside of me any longer. When did you first go out with Joe? It was just a few days after I met him at the tunnel. I didn't let Dad know about it. We went to a show, and, and then after that, we saw each other every weekend. No, Joe. your father again. I have to. I'm all he has in the world. But you gotta break away someday. I know it, but, but not yet. Not yet? What are you waiting for? Look, we can't go on like this. You haven't even told him about us. I can't, Joe. You know how he is. If he thought that you were dependable... I it... am now, Mary. I want us to get married, uh, to settle down, have a home. I want those things, too. But I want him to like you, Joe. I want him to be glad that I'm marrying you. That's a big order. It's not too big if you'll try. I'll try anything. But then stop teasing him and rubbing him the wrong way. And, and stop finding nicknames for him. But, honey, I'm only ribbing him. I know, but he takes it seriously. Don't you see, Joe, he's competing with you, with the whole crew. He's always had to be the strongest and the best. He just won't face the fact that he's getting older. Honey, what do you want me to do? You've got to get along with him. Even if it means swallowing your own pride. All right, if that's the way you want it. I'll have that big bone crusher eating out of the palm of my hand. <laughs> and remember, Joe, no more nicknames. Joe Riley went back to work the next day, determined to win Jim Harrigan over. Light on the other side of the river. We'll see light soon enough. 
Take it slow for a change. Get back to your cellar, Riley. You're not being paid for it, right? a lot, but it don't hurt. That guy's impossible. There's no getting along with him. I know better. Where do you think I'd be if it weren't for him? He's kept me working all these years. I've got a home and practically a daughter when nobody else would have me. You, maybe. But no one else likes him. They break their backs. What thanks do they get? Well, maybe he don't show it, but he's loyal to those that stick. Logan, ready! Stop scabbing and get to work! Sure. He's great. Great! Oh, you shouldn't be here. Dad'll be home any minute. I don't care. I want to talk to you. Well, what happened? Get him to like me, you said. I've been practically crawled on my hands and knees trying to help him. I've been eating dirt for a whole week and I'm sick of it. Joe, nothing can be accomplished this way. You're angry. I got a right to be. You'll work it out some way, darling. Just be patient. You've said that for the last month. Look, honey, we're getting married. You got my engagement ring and you can't even wear it. What's the matter, Mary? Aren't you sure of me? Don't you... Don't you love me? You know I do. Well, then what are we waiting for? I don't want to hurt him. Don't you see, Joe, that he loves me, too? He spent his entire life working for me. Well, you gotta make up your mind. You can't have both of us. Give me time to think about it, Joe. What is there to think about? I love you so much, darling. Mary! Get out of here. Now, take it easy, Harrigan. We got a few things to tell you. You heard me get out of here. We love each other, Dad. And we're going to be married. Marry him? Not while I'm around. How long has this been going on? A couple of months. Behind my back. Be calm, Jim. This is for real. You wouldn't know what that meant. I warned you. I told you to stay away from him. I told you it was never anything but booze and skirts for him, and you wouldn't listen. You listen, Dad. Joe isn't like that at all. You were wrong. If I ever catch you around this house again, I'll throw you out. If you ever try to see her again, I'll tear you apart. Now get out of here. Dad, please. I told you there was no use. You're fired, Riley. Finished. Pick up your check tomorrow. I never want to see you again. Dad shoved him out and slammed the door in his face. I haven't seen Joe since. I don't know what to believe, Mr. Matthews. I believe Dad and I believe Joe. All I know is that I love him. And I want to know the truth. I'd like to know the truth, too, Miss Harrigan. And I think Mr. Logan can tell us what it is. Remember, it's not only Joe. It's Mary's happiness, her future. You love him, Mary. You sure? You're right, Mr. Matthews. I know what happened. I saw it. I thought Harrigan would own up. I didn't know how it was between Mary and Joe. But first, you gotta understand how it is between Harrigan and me. He saved my life once. He kept me working. He's my best friend. I understand. Suppose you tell us how it happened. 
I didn't know about the argument, so it didn't seem strange when Joe showed up for work the next morning. Especially now. You just don't understand about that. I told you I never want to see you again. Now get going. You can't split us up, no matter what you do. We're getting married. Oh, I have to throw you out? I'm hired by the week, not by the hour or the day, Harrigan. Put down that drill! Leave me alone, Harrigan. Come on, Riley, let's see how strong you are. Don't get me, boss. What's the matter, Riley? Afraid? Afraid of a man twice your age? Okay, Harrigan. You're big and strong, a real champ. Now go throw your weight around somewhere else. and pull him out. They fought all right, Mr. Matthews, but Joe didn't try to kill him. I think that's the real story, Mary. The truth. You understand, Mary. Now, I could confront your father with this testimony in court, but I think it would be better if you would straighten him out first, Mary. I'll go right away, Mr. Matthews. When can I see Joe? Soon. And he'll be glad to see you, too. On the basis of Jim Harrigan's testimony, the district attorney dropped the complaint, and Joe was released that day. Joe and Mary are married now. They've got an apartment just down the street from where Harrigan and Pete Logan live. They're friendly, except for an argument now and then about Junior. But aren't all father-in-laws that way? Now, the case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender. Tonight, Philip Morris salutes public defender Quinn M. Dickerson, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and his staff for outstanding achievement in the cause of justice.